Well, REM's theme for fundamentals for our particular site is, is quite pertinent, I think, because um, the site is on the axis with the Shrine of Remembrance, which commemorates the First World War and those who fought and died, I think, in, the, in, that, in that terrible conflict. Um, and it's a major monument in Melbourne and it has a, the, the main um, ceremonial axis through Melbourne up Swanston Street uh, ends essentially in this site that we've uh, proposed, that our unbuilt project uh, was on back in 1995. Uh, and the biggest story there is too that the site was occupied by the Carlton and United Brewery until about 20 years ago. And it had a very large neon sign with CUB on it. It was a famous sign. And so there was a march that was established between our site, the CUB site, and the shrine through the city uh, on Anzac Day, which is the uh, day that commemorates the battle or the beginning of the battle at Gallipoli, which was a terrible mistake, essentially, and was just a bloodbath. Um, but many feel that it was part of the sort of birth of the nation of Australia. Australia um, had federation uh, from the British government in, uh, in 1901 and so became an independent um, nation um, with a, strangely enough, with a, a common monarch. Uh, but an independent nation and the First World War and particularly the battles at Gallipoli became that kind of iconic um, blood spattering, I suppose, event for the nation. Uh, and so the site has this special quality about it. Um, what, what, um, what we did with it to come perhaps to, the, uh, to architecture, um, there's, a, there's another site that, uh, uh, on which the famous ICI building was built, which is uh, on an axis but perpendicular to uh, the Swanson Street one that I've been talking about, uh, that runs out of town and at the edge of the CBD grid, the grid kinks off and um, this ICI building is, is in that location. And it's a 20-storey building. It's a, a sort of copy of Lever House, I guess. It's built in 1961. Lever House is 10 years before or so. It doesn't have the Lever House sort of podium, but it does have that all-glass sort of 20-storey odd um, modernist building. And it was certainly the tallest building in Melbourne at that time and was, was really a a major achievement architecturally in terms of really introducing everything from building technique um, to, to the way the building was used and the whole sort of uh, international style, I suppose, commercial, late international style agenda of modernism. Uh, we um, deployed that building, if you like, on our site because a similar action happens. The fact that Swanson Street um, ends on our side is because there's a kink in the grid, a very similar kink um, to the one that ICI House sits on. Uh, and so we, we thought it would be a cunning plan to um, deploy ICI House as a sort of beginning point. Uh, we then um, uh, stretched, I suppose, that building to the point where it broke in half and, and form this kind of um, elastic zone across what remains the sort of axis that runs through, essentially through our site. Uh, and so it created this kind of eroded space or a plastic space, a kind of, I, I guess at that time we were trying to say a new kind of space because the idea of the building was that it would be a, a sort of innovation centre for a major university in Melbourne, RMIT. Um, so, f um, and then the fact that our project is unbuilt is, a, is, is an interesting one, but the project that 
if, if it's worth saying, the project that was built there, which has just been finished recently, also looks like a version of ICI Hout. Unlike perhaps um, some of those great, you know, the great central disseminating cultures of Europe, um, which are, uh, seem to us, um, you know, they've got or have had, you know, eras of highly developed ideology and so on um, expressed in the work. Um, and, and modernism, of course, is, you know, um, the most recent and major of those. Um, we don't have um, any qualms about um, treating those with either um, love and affection or extreme aggression um, and generating an architecture that we think is, um, is very much of our place, I suppose, here and time. But, um, uh, you know, it doesn't um, isn't concerned, I suppose, with those, maybe doesn't even understand and doesn't even want to understand some of the nuances of, um, of you know, the intellectual traditions of Europe. And even if we, and even if we do know them, um, we know them in a kind of academic sense. Um, we may choose to either overlook um, overlook what we know, or we may choose to um, uh, you know be quite agitated about uh, how we how we represent i suppose some of these concerns. Uh, we won uh, a competition in 1995 um, uh, for the site. Uh, it was run by a developer, uh, but it was a project for uh, RMIT, and so I, I think there was some kind of um, joint venture, perhaps, that was behind the, uh, or, or going to be behind the, the project. Um, The fact that it didn't proceed, I suspect, was the developer who originally ran that competition, uh, I think, disappeared, went bankrupt or whatever, uh, no longer proceeded with that project. I think RMIT as well um, changed their, their mind about things. Eventually the site was, um, RMIT bought part of the site and the other part, of the rest of the site, that is probably two thirds to three quarters of the site, was sold to another developer. Uh, we we did do uh, more development work uh, with RMIT on various housing schemes that were part of that original um, scheme, but not the main building in the front. They were at the the northern half of the site. Again, that work didn't go ahead. Um, as I say, it was then sold to another developer uh, with whom we did uh, a competition and, and we won um, one of the projects of five buildings that they were intending to build. I think our building was going to be built last, but in fact it's being built first. Um, so we are in fact building a building right now which will be finished exactly 20 years after we won that first competition in respect of that, creating that kind of elastic space um, through which that axis sort of went. At that time, we, um, we and I think maybe the nation, um, still wasn't recognising in any significant way the Aboriginal um, heritage of the, of the country and therefore that, that axis had no no recognition of that, that the, the nation was, was always the new nation of Australia, sort of, um, um, you know, born in the blood of Gallipoli or something. What we've been able to do with the new building, and so maybe this is a nice thing that our original project didn't go ahead, was that we've created the building with a, uh, 
with a way of generating a visage of, um, of the last uh, Aboriginal leader of, um, of the peoples of Melbourne, the Aboriginal people of Melbourne, um, William Barrack, uh, through a sort of computer generated methodology within the balconies of the building. But it means that this building looks down the, this, or this figure, this visage, looks down the axis to the shrine. So we feel now that we've, we've I, I suppose in terms of that theme about a national identity and a, and a kind of specificity and a, and a, and a locality, um, we, we've been able to um, now do a building that has this sort of deep history component as well as you know, the, the, the ideas about the modern nation. And so we're hoping that will be really quite a stunning kind of apprehension within the city. The building is about 30, 35 stories or so, so it's a big visage. Um, it's, big, it's a big face. Um, um, and, and we think, you know, a, a major and appropriate sort of recognition of um, obviously the way in which uh, Western culture um, overwhelmed, I suppose, the indigenous culture that was here for so long before. The main point about the building we proposed, I think, was, was this sort of access thing and trying to, and, and around that access, trying to find a way for a new kind of space. So this, this idea that I've been talking about of pulling uh, or grabbing the sides of um, Lever House or ICI House and just stretching them to the point where they create these this kind of new tense and stretched and um, distorted space between these uh, two essentially facade aspects of the building which hold the two streets on each side uh, and that 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 space we 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 were still well looking back it, we were um, you know our computer generating techniques were pretty primitive 1995 however um, we were we, we were certainly still running down that path of trying to more discover new space rather than uh, dictate space and this this axis I suppose you know seemed to be the opportunity for that and I and uh, the building you know compared to buildings being proposed at that time in Melbourne was a certainly a very very uh, a very very different building um, and I, I guess it came through this kind of both its sense of place and location, the sort of thematics of, uh, of the city and, and the nation, and, uh, and this sort of operational technique of architecture which is, 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 is aiming toward the self-generated.